Hey guys, so in this video we're going to talk about the conjugate zeros theorem. And so before we get into the theorem, what is the conjugate? So this comes up, there's, there's kind of different areas where it comes up, but the concept of the conjugate is if you have two terms, the conjugate is found by just flipping the whatever sign is in the middle. So here I have 3 plus 2i, so 3 minus 2i is the conjugate. I have 5 minus 3i, so 5 plus 3i is the conjugate. And then if I have negative 7 plus i, negative 7 minus i would be the conjugate. So that's what we mean by the conjugate. So um, before I tell you what the theorem is, I want to just tell you that in math, there's a couple ways that there, there's another way. There's another way we denote conjugates. So for complex numbers, sometimes we just use the letter z to denote that we're working with a complex number. So let z be some number a plus bi. So the conjugate then, so since conjugates are so common with, with complex numbers, the conjugate is found by z bar. And it's exactly what you think the conjugate is of the original term. So if I have z is 3 plus 2i, then z bar is 3 minus 2i. So that's what that notation means. Okay, now using this notation, there's a couple of properties of conjugates that um, help to prove why the conjugate zeros theorem works. So I just want to state this. So the three properties, if I have c, c plus d bar, that's equal to c bar plus d bar. If I have c times d bar, that's equal to c bar times d bar. And then if I have c to the n bar, that's equal to c bar to the n. So just a couple of properties of conjugates that I wanted to mention. And now I can finally tell you what the conjugate zeros theorem is. So if f of x is a polynomial with only real coefficients, and if z is equal to that a plus bi, is, and it's a zero of your polynomial f of x, where a and b are only, or where a and b are real numbers, then the conjugate is also a zero. Heh. <laughs> so what does this mean? Um, okay, so what this is saying is, so if you have any polynomial, it's really important that it has only the real coefficients. So this part here is kind of important. So if the polynomial has re real coefficients and you're going about your business trying to find the zeros of that polynomial, let's say, say you find one complex number as a zero, then as a freebie, you also get the conjugate. That's what this is trying to get at. Okay, so with that in mind, different ways that we can use this. Let's say that I want to find a polynomial of least degree with only real coefficients and zeros 2 and 3 minus i. Okay, so if we have to have real co coefficients, then what that means is that we have also 3 plus i as a zero. So that is what the conjugate, the conjugate zeros theorem guarantees. I can't speak today. Okay, so polynomial of least degree with the information that we've been given. It's going to look like this, f of x equals, so the first zero is x minus 2, x minus 3 minus i, and then x minus 3 plus i. Now, in this particular problem, we have no other information about the polynomial, so this would technically suffice. So we're, we are done. That would be the polynomial of least degree. Now. It is totally possible, so it kind of depends on the homework system, but like I know that the homework system that I use in my class will want you to actually multiply all of this out together. So without further ado, let's make some space and let's take a moment to multiply this all together. Okay, so the first thing that you're gonna wanna do if you have to multiply this all together is you're gonna wanna distribute the negative sign. distributed all my negatives and now we're gonna have to just FOIL this out. Now I will give you a little hint. Start with the imaginary numbers because those are probably actually gonna work out kind of nicely. So I'm gonna leave the x minus 2 just hanging out and then I can start multiplying. So this is x squared minus 3x minus ix okay and then minus 3x plus 9 this is gonna get a little long plus 3i plus ix minus 3i minus i squared. Okay, so when I go to unpack 
everything that I multiplied. Notice the ix's drop out, the three i's drop out. Um, this part here, minus i squared is equivalent to plus one. So i squared is equal to negative one. So you just flip the sign. So now I have, let's see, x squared minus 6x plus 10. So a lot of those i's and, and i x's are actually going to drop out and it's going to turn into something much nicer to work with. And then you just finish the multiplication. So let's see, this will be x cubed minus 6x squared plus 10x minus 2x squared plus 12x minus 20. Okay, and so then my final answer, I'm just going to squeeze it in. I have x cubed, let's see, minus 8x squared plus 22x minus 20. All right, and so there is the final polynomial. So we had it in the factor form and now we, we actually wrote it in its standard polynomial form. Okay, so now let me pose another slightly related question. So suppose k equals negative i is one zero of f of x equals x to the fourth plus 26 x squared plus 25. What are the other zeros? Okay, so with this one, notice all of your coefficients are real numbers. So you get for free, you also get a zero for free. If minus i is one, so you can think of this as zero minus i, so zero plus i would be the conjugate, so the other zero would be i. So you are guaranteed now to have negative i and i as, as zeros. Now from here, you can set up some synthetic division and, you know, work through this. So let's see, I've got one for x to the fourth, zero for x to the third, 26 for x squared, zero for x, and 25. So now I'll draw my line. Let's see, let's bring down the one. One times negative i is negative i. All right, now negative i, oops, sorry, I need to add these. So zero plus negative i is negative i. Now negative i times negative i will give me positive i squared and i squared is equal to negative one. Okay, 25, 26 minus one is 25. 25 times negative i is negative 25i. Add those together, I get negative 25i negative 25i times negative i will give me positive 25i squared, which becomes negative 25, so that's zero. So we knew that this had to end with a zero, so if you made any mistakes in the, like you'll know right away if you made a mistake in this operation, because if you don't get a zero here, that violates what we were told in the problem. So you, that's like a guarantee, this has to be a zero. Okay, so I have one zero, so let's, let's see, um, I need some extra space, so let me make some more space. Okay, so to interpret this now, what I have here is that x plus i, so this thing factors as x plus i times, so this will be the x to the third column, right? So this is x to the fourth, so it starts at x to the third. So this is gonna be x to the third minus i x squared plus 25x minus 25i. Okay, so we're not done, so let me clear some space. So remember, we also said that i was a, a zero, so we did just negative i. So now we're gonna do i, and we're gonna do that on the, on this part of the polynomial now. So my coefficients here are one negative i 25 and negative 25 i. So bring down the one, one times i is i, negative i plus i is zero. Zero times i is going to be zero, 25 plus zero is 25. 25 times i is 25 i, negative 25 i plus 25 i is zero. Cool. All right, so now, um, all right, so now I have a new polynomial, we had x plus i. Now this is x minus i for that new, uh, that, new, um, that new zero, the zero right here. And this result, so this polynomial started out with x to the third. So this is gonna be the x squared column. So this is gonna become x squared 
plus 25. All right, so we need to still factor this down into linear factors, or we need to find the other zeros. So let's see, hold on, the question said, what are the other zeros? So not what are, what are the other factors? So slightly different way of asking. Let's clear some space. Okay, so now I just wanna figure out what are the zeros here? Because I know the zeros from these two factors. So if you're just being asked to find the zeros, then I don't have to factor this. I can instead go another route to figure out the zeros, i.e. I can set it equal to zero, and I can use our old friend, the square root property. So this would equal x squared equals negative 25. And then when you use the square root property, so you take the square root of each side, but when you take the square root of the right side, just remember you have to put a plus or minus in front of the square root. And now I can say that my x is equal to five i and negative five i. So my zeros in this case are i, negative i, 5i, and negative 5i. Now, if I were asked to, if I asked what, if I asked what are the factors, then I would just take x minus each one of these zeros. So tomato, tomato, it's just a slightly different way of asking the question. Okay, so for this last problem I have in this video, so we've got factor, this crazy looking polynomial, 2x cubed plus 3 minus 2i x squared plus negative 8 minus 5ax plus 3 plus 3i into factors given that k equals 1 plus i is a factor. So the thing I, I want to discuss here is notice that the coefficients here, these are complex numbers, right? This is a complex number, this is a complex number, this is a complex number. So the conjugate zeros theorem does not apply here because the conjugate zeros theorem says that you have to have only real coefficients. So when you don't have only real coefficients, then you are not guaranteed to have the conjugates as the answers, as both zeros, okay, or factors, or however you want to think of it. So if I have k equals 1 plus i, since I don't have all real coefficients, I am not guaranteed to have 1 minus i. So what that means then is we kind of have to just grin and bear it and hope that, you know, after using synthetic division, that maybe this works out into something nice. So let's make some extra room here. And so I've got one plus i is the zero. So let's set up the synthetic division. Now, the synthetic division here is gonna require quite a bit of um, multiplication with complex numbers. So I really wanna encourage you to try this one on your own because you could watch me do it. And, you know, yeah, of course I will do it, you know, fine, hopefully, <laughs> because, you know, I've, I've got a master's in math, so I know how to do this. So what's important though is that you get it, right? So the only way that you're gonna meaningfully understand this is if you pause the video and try it yourself. So pause here, give it a try. Even if you make a mistake, the worst that happens is your ego's a little bruised, but otherwise, you know, you'll learn something. So it's better to make a mistake and learn something than to just watch somebody who knows what they're doing do it. Okay, so I'm gonna get started. Here's two, so this becomes two plus two i when I multiply that together, and that's gonna leave me with uh, just five, okay? And then I multiply five times that complex number, so this becomes five plus five i. Oh, this is kind of working out nice, right? So then if I add those together, I get negative three. Oh, this works out quite nicely. And then negative three times one plus i, this becomes negative three minus three i. So actually, even though, you know, we were maybe dreading, oh, I gotta work with complex numbers, actually it worked out pretty nicely. So it wasn't that bad of a problem. Okay, so now here are, here's one factor. And so now I'm left with two x squared plus five x minus three. And so now I just have to factor that last thing. So this becomes, let's see, I'll, I'll just distribute that minus. So x minus one minus i. And then let's see, I'll factor this. So two x and x. And then um, let's see. So I've gotta have plus three here, that'll give me six. And then minus, oops, minus one here. That'll give me a five x in the middle. And that'll still guarantee I get negative three at the end. So there are my linear factors. We are all good. Okay. So that is just a couple different ways that you can work with complex numbers, imaginary numbers, um, when you are working with polynomials. If you found that helpful, please consider liking this video. And otherwise, I will talk to you guys in another video. Thanks for watching.